White line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a really neat show for y'all. We're in Clinton, Louisiana for the second annual Feliciana wildlife expo i'm telling you what they got some pretty neat things out here today and i'm here to learn um they're, they're going to talk about uh, wild hogs we're going to be talking about aging deer uh the native browse they're going to be some shooting they're going to be some cooking we're even going to get to see a deer herd so y'all hang on cajun living and cooking is fixing to start right about now all right y'all we made it outside we just seen the hog seminar in there and i met two really nice gentlemen let's get their names and where they're from i'm dr jonathan roberts uh, I'm from the Louisiana Department of Ag and Forestry. I'm one of their veterinarians. I'm Dr. Jim LaCour, and I'm the state wildlife veterinarian with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Now, they gave a bunch of information in there, y'all, that we, the show's not long enough to be able to tell it all. But in a nutshell, we're going to talk about the feral hogs. And uh, tell me a little bit about the population and how many we need to kill and, and, and some of those numbers. All right, we have about 700,000 feral hogs in our state. They're in all 64 parishes. Uh, they have an extremely high reproductive rate. They can have two litters a year, averaging about six piglets per litter. Uh, and statisticians have figured that uh, you need to kill about 70% of them to keep the same number. So, wow. Uh, last year, according to our hunter harvest surveys, uh, hunters killed about 216,000. So. We're nowhere near 70%, and therefore the population's probably still expanding. Wow. Now, you talked about some of the diseases and, mm -hmm. and some of the other things with hogs. With the Louisiana Department of Ag and Forestry, one of the things that we're worried about are diseases that come from feral hogs, and they get into our domestic hog population. Um, in the state of Louisiana, one of the our biggest things here is, is backyard hogs. We don't have a big commercial hog population, so these are transitional hogs, and they can come in contact with feral hogs. So in 2016, we enacted regulations to, to aid in the control of feral swine by transport and controlling uh, who can hold hogs and, and where they can go. Awesome. And, and there's many, many ways to get rid of hogs, from shooting them to trapping them. And, and we have the luxury of standing by one of the really modern technology right here behind us y'all you can see it's a pin behind us and there's a camera on there and the the camera calls your phone and tells you hey there's hogs in your pen so you push a button and the automatic gate closes down and you got hogs in the pen all you gotta do is go get them and start cleaning them up and uh I, do you ever see hogs being all the way eradicated uh, not with current technologies, probably. And um, they're also... And we can, you know, there are uh, landowners who have gotten cooperatives with their neighbors to get big blocks of land and used multiple technologies, hunting, night shooting, trapping, uh, all those technologies. And they really have reduced the population significantly down to tolerable numbers. But it, it, you, even in that situation, you have to stay vigilant because they'll come right back afterwards if you don't keep your guard up. And also, they will run the deer off. Sure, and Dr. Court can talk more on that, but, but they are environmental vacuums, basically. They, they reduce animal uh, species diversity and plant diverse, diversity because they'll eat just about anything and eat all of it. Uh, they can alter the, the physical landscape in, in as little as five years by rooting and uh, vacuuming up all the hard mass in the woods. Uh, prevents new trees from germinating, actually. Wow. So they're, they're not really good. They're good eating, but they're not really good. I want to thank y'all for taking a minute and talking with me, and uh, y'all keep up the good work, fellas. Thank, thank you. you. Over to another booth, and it's Mr. Dave Marlin, better known as Dr. Deer. How's it going? Good, Ron. Good I had the you. pleasure of fishing with him a couple weeks ago, and we tore up the brim. But uh, he's here. He's one of the leading state biologists on deer. Retired now, but he knows how to age these deer, and uh, we, we can't show you everything, but he's going to tell us 
in the amount of time that we have about aging deer. Right, Ron, I'm gonna give you a short version. Uh, you age deer based on the tooth eruption and the wear. For instance, this obviously is a fawn. Fawn skull would look like this. These are the pedicle bones that the antlers will grow on. A fawn basically has three temporary premolars and the first molar is beginning to erupt. And generally it, between November, December, January, that molar will become fully erupted. Now that third premolar, that third temporary pre premolar has three cusps, three parts. And that's the key for aging deer. As that deer grows older, here he is moving up into the year old age class, what we would call year and a half old during the hunting season. He has his two permanent molars have erupted. The third molar is beginning to erupt, but he still has that third temporary premolar that has the three parts. Uh, here's one now, what we would still call a year and a half old, but you can see that that third permanent premolar is beginning to erupt and push that temporary premolar away and eventually it will become fully erupted. Now this this third temporary premolar that has three cusps is replaced with a permanent ah. premolar now that has only two cusps. And so that's the key for aging two and a half and older if they have this this third premolar that has the two cusps to it. And then from there you start looking at the wear uh, two and a half year old deer, there's very little wear on that third molar, particularly on the rear cusps. As he, as he gets to the three and a half year old age class, you're beginning to see the brown dentine. Oh, the yeah. white is the enamel. Now you're starting to see the brown dentine start to show up as it erodes. This third cusp on that third molar is cup shaped. As he moves into the four and a half year old age class, he begins to get a slant on that last cusp. Instead of being cup shaped, now it's slanted to the gum line. And so that's the key for telling four and a half and older. And after that, then you begin to wear, look at the wear on the crest. And obviously you can see this is an oh, old wow. deer that is basically worn flat. Uh, normally deer in the wild, eight, a doe eight, nine years old, their teeth are worn out. Sometimes, you know, they might live to 12 and all that. That one there uh, is eight of plenty of acorns. Right. Normally, a year and a half old bucks in this state, because of our habitat conditions, are spike deer. Generally, for the however, you can have some situations where you get branched antlers, which is ideal if you have branched antlers in your year and a half old age class. A well-fed deer. A well-fed, good nutrition. And then from there, uh, as they get older, what you're looking for is a, is a uh, good branched antler deer that gets the tine, longer tine length and begins to add mass on the circumference on the antlers if the nutrition is there. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's, that's the main, that's, is that the only <laughs> way to age deer? I mean, No, you can, you can cut uh, these incisors and send them off and they do it kind of like counting tree rings. Uh, some say it's real accurate, some say it's not. Uh, Basically, for management purposes, this type of aging is enough. If you can put deer into the fawn, the six-month age class, the year-and-a-half-old age class, the yearling in the adult age class, two-and-a-half, two-and-three-year-old deer are basically young adults, four, five, and six are mature adults. There's the ones that you're basically That's hunting. Want. That's the ones you're trying to grow. And then the old adults are the seven and older uh, deer. All right. Well, that was very informative today. Right. I good, want to thank good you. Good seeing you. Thank, thank you for coming out. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, hog head cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center, an authorized Hustler, Bobcat, and Toro lawnmower dealer. Specializing in service, support, and satisfaction. Come see the wide selection of new mowers, parts, string trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and much more. Our home center features hardware, feed, outdoor cooking supplies, hunting gear, and everything for the do-it-yourself homeowner. Come take a short country drive to the hidden jewel of Livingston and experience real professional knowledge and health. Livingston Mower Supply at Home Center. 
The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style press po'boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Miss D's Sweet Sensations is a wholesale sweet shop located in Santa Mar, Louisiana. The business is locally owned and operated by Diane Bro. now with 12 delicious varieties to choose from. You can find Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations in all of your local supermarkets and convenience stores. Made fresh daily by six full-time employees right here in Ascension Parish. Hey, store owners, restaurants, and caterers, if you're not selling Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations, you're not selling the best products on the market. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Bayou Antiques and Gifts is a 4,000 square foot store full of memories and treasures where you can find just about anything such as home decor, furniture, collectibles, art, sports memorabilia, primitives, Dixie Bell paint, Jadeite, McCoy, Fenton, Solana Ware, and much more. New items come in daily, so things are always changing, and we are striving to bring you everything you need for your home and personal collections. And if we don't have it, we'll even try to help you find it. Stop by Bayou Antiques and Gifts for a fun, relaxing shopping experience. We're a lot bigger than you think. Man, where'd you get those Mr. Beats from? Hey, it's the New Hunting Fishing Store. New Hunting Fishing Store? New Hunting Fishing Store? New hunting and fishing store? Yeah, on Highway 44 in Gonzales. It's Ascension Living and Outdoors. They carry a full line of fresh and saltwater baits and tackle, including Matrix, Voodoo Shrimp, Missile, Zoom, and local baits like Delta Lures and Humding. And the hunting section is loaded with calls, scents, knives, attractants, and much more. They even carry deer candy and Nate's buck bait. Oh yeah, ladies, there's even a gift shop. All right, y'all, I done found a man in charge. Let's get his name and where he's from. Uh, my name is Glenn Gentry and I'm from Clinton, Louisiana. Now here at the Ag Center, uh, what, all, what all do y'all do here? Tell me about the place. Uh, this is Idaho Wild Research Station and, and it's part of the LSU Ag Center system and we have 16 of these across the state and each particular station uh, has a niche and a research mission that is geared towards the commodity that is produced in that particular area. This station is geared toward wildlife and uh, some of the things that we have going on on the station uh, we're of course working with the feral swine toxicant we're trying to develop a toxicant uh, where we can deliver a toxin on the ground negate impact to non-target animals and also kill pigs in a relatively short time uh, we also have some studies going on with epizootic hemorrhagic disease uh -oh. and blue tongue virus in white-tailed deer uh, for those of y'all that have not heard of that, it moves through the wild populations about every three to four years. So much so in 2012, I think it was, uh, North Dakota refunded hunting license fees to hunters because they're not, their herds in the wild were so decimated that they did not think that they would be able to get out and, and kill deer. Wow. wow. So that, that's kind of what we do on the station right now. It's two of our main thrusts. Now y'all have wild deer and y'all also have 
We have wild deer on the station, and we also have a captive whitetail herd down here, about 125 animals. Uh, we also have a uh, captive red deer herd here. What's interesting is the, the, the white tails are new world deer, and the red deer are old world deer. So where the white tails will uh, browse and eat things like that, the red deer actually graze like cattle. Oh. And the blue tongue, the interesting part about that is the blue tongue virus and the EHDV do not affect the red deer. Wow. And they do not affect cattle. So they're, they're similar along those. Wow. They're kind of like a cousin to elk, the red deer are. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for okay. talking with me and thank you for all you do out here. You're quite welcome. And y'all come back anytime. All right, y'all made it over to the sausage guys. Let's get their names and where they from. Uh, my name is Dylan Bieber and I'm from a village called Mowater, Louisiana. Wow. I'm Philip Alford and I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now we got the finished product out here. Now y'all have made it. Walk me through the making of sausage. Okay. It just works on a simple logger. It's got a small blade that cuts the product and then we're going to push it through. It's going to push it through this plate. This is our this is our course plate. We're going to start with this one, and then we're going to use this for our final. Granulated onion, garlic, paprika, whatever you have. This one is a pre-mixed one that we got from Targill. So you all probably heard of Targill, not uh, Yeah, I got it. So the reason we start with the big plate is so we don't overwork our product. Uh, you can try to force it to do this one, but you're going to end up uh, melting some of your fat and it's going to affect the appearance of your product. So we're going to start with the bigger one uh, first, and it's also going to prevent you from burning up your grinder. Okay, go ahead. I'm using are dehydrated green onions. Uh, we do that for a couple of reasons. Now we're, we're actually ready for the barbecue pit Here now. We're going to the grill. All right, y'all, it's getting good. They're going to cook up some sausage, and that's how you make sausage right there. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, hog head cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items, which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials, and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center, an authorized Hustler, Bobcat, and Toro lawnmower dealer. Specializing in service, support, and satisfaction. Come see the wide selection of new mowers, parts, string trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and much more. 
Our home center features hardware, feed, outdoor cooking supplies, hunting gear, and everything for the do-it-yourself homeowner. Come take a short country drive to the hidden jewel of Livingston and experience real professional knowledge and health. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center. The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style press po'boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Miss D's Sweet Sensations is a wholesale sweet shop located in Santa Maria, Louisiana. The business is locally owned and operated by Diane Bro. now with 12 delicious varieties to choose from. You can find Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations in all of your local supermarkets and convenience stores. Made fresh daily by six full-time employees right here in Ascension Parish. Hey, store owners, restaurants, and caterers, if you're not selling Mrs. D's Sweet Sensations, you're not selling the best product on the market. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Bayou Antiques and Gifts is a 4,000 square foot store full of memories and treasures where you can find just about anything such as home decor, furniture, collectibles, art, sports memorabilia, primitives, Dixie Bell paint, Jadeite, McCoy, Fenton, Solana Ware, and much more. New items come in daily, so things are always changing, and we are striving to bring you everything you need for your home and personal collections. And if we don't have it, we'll even try to help you find it. Stop by Bayou Antiques and Gifts for a fun, relaxing shopping experience. We're a lot bigger than you think. Man, where'd you get those Mr. Beats from? There's a new hunting and fishing store. New hunting and fishing store? New hunting and fishing store? New hunting and fishing store? Yeah, on Highway 44 in Gonzales. It's Ascension Living and Outdoors. They carry a full line of fresh and saltwater baits and tackle, including Matrix, Voodoo Shrimp, Missile, Zoom, and local baits like Delta Lures and Humding. And the hunting section is loaded with calls, scents, knives, attractants, and much more. They even carry deer candy and Nate's buck bait. Oh yeah, ladies, there's even a gift shop. Ernie, the Harris Hawk. Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie, you got anything to say? He he might. He might. Now, uh. What do y'all do together? So, so Ernie's my hunting partner. Uh, so six months out of the year, pretty starting this weekend with the opening of rail season, uh, we hunt uh, we hunt rails and rabbits, uh, some uh, some squirrels, some uh, quail if we can find them, um, and uh, but mostly rabbits. Now he flies down and finds the rabbit for you and you have to go to him or well it's a it's a joint process so we uh, we go out into a field that looks likely it's got uh, briar patches maybe an old fallow cow pasture um and uh, and he'll follow from tree to tree or he'll ride on my fist and uh, we'll walk as you know as hard through the briars as we can get uh flush the rabbits out and then he chases them down and uh, like he catches about one out of four that we flush and then you go to him after he's caught. Oh it. yeah, so he uh, he didn't bring it back. Um, he he starts eating as, as fast oh. as he can. So if you want any for gumbo, you gotta go get <laughs> you gotta go get it. But we uh, we we go and uh, and dispatch the rabbit. Uh, trade trade the rabbit for a little piece of meat that we carry with us. Usually yeah. something that he caught the day before. Yeah. Um, and put the rabbit in the bag, and then you get the rabbit, and he gets a little piece of meat, and then we can go hunt another rabbit if we want to. How old is he? Uh, he's eleven. 
and uh, they'll live uh, over 30 years. Oh wow! Yeah, I heard him say something. Yeah, so he they make a noise with uh, with uh, people they like. Uh, there's All like right. a little there's like a little purring noise, and uh, so my kids uh, come and see him every morning, and he goes. Oh, he likes it. Oh, he likes it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all made it over to the snake department, and uh, I don't know if that's man's best friend or not, but uh, let's get his name and where he's from. My name is Brad Glorioso, folks call me Bones, and right here I have a speckled king snake, and his name is Sinbad. Sinbad's about nine years old. He's non-venomous, or otherwise I wouldn't be holding him. He is a snake that a lot of people, even unfamiliar with snakes, can recognize. The salt and pepper, the black with the yellow spots, they call him a king snake because they will eat other snakes, although they eat a lot of other things like rodents and other, other types of animals. But they can successfully consume venomous snakes such as our copperheads and, and cottonmouths and rattlesnakes. Uh, this is a very large individual, but he's been captive bred and he's been held by thousands of individuals over the past many years. So um, it's a very, very uh, important snake and he is pretty common throughout the state of Louisiana. All right, y'all, we made it over to the shooting sports area. It's really neat out here. Uh, let me get your name and where you're from. I'm Dana Leger uh, from Acadia Parish 4-H Shooting Sports. Now, tell me a little bit about what y'all doing out here today. What are y'all offering? Okay, today we have a couple of volunteers here from the 4-H Shooting Sports program. We have a couple of our teen ambassadors, which uh, are our shooting sports teen ambassadors, and they are here trying to give the kids a little experience with um, archery, with BB gun, and with shotgun. Now, if some kids wanted to get involved with this, uh, how would you recommend they do it? Well, uh, normally each school has a 4-H club. They can contact, uh, they can join their 4-H club. They can, if their school doesn't have a local club, they can always go to their local 4-H um, or 8 uh, 4-H agent or LSU agent extension office and go there and get some information on the program. All right. Well, thank you for talking to me, and uh, yes, let's sir. watch some of them shoot. Sure. Thank you. All right, y'all, we made it over to the shotgun area, and I got Super Shooter right here. Let's get her name and where she's from. My name's Jeannie Gines, and I'm from Baton Rouge, the central area. That was some good shooting. You've been, have you shot before? Not shotguns. That was, you, I think you missed your first one, and you hit like five after that. Yeah. It makes you want to shoot some more, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> now your daughter's up there now fixing to shoot. Right. And she, has she shot before? She's never shot shotguns. Oh, this is a first timer, y'all. So she shot 22s a few times. Gotcha. Well, thank you for talking, and let's see how she does. Thank you. All right, y'all, we made it back over to the sausage that is now officially done. And uh, got some folks sitting here eating with me. How is it? Very good. It's very good. Is it good? It's very good. It's just hot. It's spicy <laughs> hot? No, we oh. heat. Oh, it's fresh off the grill. Yes. Oh, yeah, y'all, I'm fixing to try me some. And uh, we had a good day out here today. Got to, uh, I got to learn a good bit. Hopefully, you got to learn a good bit. And uh, it was really neat. And I think I'll come back next year. And... I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking.